So this is part one of the product animation masterclass and we are going to model a can. It's very simple and if you follow along with the instructions or the reference then you'll do just fine. You can also use your own product and skip on over to video 4 where I'm going to explain some fundamentals about the graph editor. If you do want to model along, no problem. I tried making this free course as beginner friendly as possible. But if you are an experienced Blender user, just model it yourself faster and I'll see you in the next video. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm starting in a new Blender scene and we're going to select both of these objects and delete it. Then I'm going to add a reference image because we need it for our reference. And here we have our textures and we get the Coke cans. I've placed the Coke cans in the Patreon for free so you can use that to follow along with this tutorial. Let's go ahead and bring this towards the side so we get the 3D cursor somewhat in the middle of this long Coke can because I'm going to use the long Coke can for this commercial. So let's add a cylinder. You could use the screw modifier method, you know, where you outline the edge of this entire thing and then use the screw modifier. But I find that the cylinder works just as well and it's so easy. So we're just going to do that. So I'm going to select the bottom side of this cylinder, press on tree on the numpad to align it with our view. And now I'm going to bring this down, pressing on G and C. Now, the first thing I'm noticing, our cylinder is not scaled big enough. And I'm only looking at one side here because we want this to be correct on one side. We're probably not going to get it right on both sides. I'm going to select the bottom part, press 3. As you can see, this part is a little bit skewed. It's probably because of the perspective of the camera looking down a little bit on the can itself. So we have to take that into account when we are modeling this. But first, let's go over here and we can see that it has some slight curvature going down. We're just going to follow that and make sure that that fits. And what I'm saying about the perspective, I think this should be correct. And if it doesn't, we can always change it. So I'm going to press I and hold shift to change the size of our new circle. And I'm going to bring it in something like this. And I'm going to press I again and bring it very close to here. And then GC and bring this upwards. Not too much, just a little bit because on the bottom of the can, it's always like indented a little bit, right? And so now we're going over to this side of the can and we're already very far in the process, not even doing very much. So we're going to press G, Z, bring it upwards. And I can see that there's a seam right here, or at least uh, the curvature starts from this point onwards. I'm going to press G and C, bring it towards that point. And now I'm going to press on three once again and Follow along with the curvature. See, uh, as the scale, bring it upwards as the scale, bring it upwards and this part is pretty straight. So right now we have then got this part of the can. No problem. E, S and scale it like so, bring it upwards just a little bit, scale it a bit, and then go like so. I feel like it has a, a little bit of a bevel or cur curved edge. So we're just going to scale it like that. E, S, and then do it back again. And it's quite hard to see because it's white on white, but I think we can eyeball it pretty decently like so. Uh, so this is the basis of our can for the first part. Now let's add a subdivision surface modifier, see what it looks like. Going over here to the normals and auto smooth. Maybe we have an edge loop too much. I'm going to delete this edge loop. Ah, that looks a little bit better. And maybe we can take this one in a little bit and scale it just a little on this side. Now that looks a lot more natural. We're going to bring in a new reference image. First of all, let's save this. Free course can. GX, let's bring it towards there. And now I'm going to add in another reference image right over here and it's the top of the can. I'm going to press on seven on the numpad and I'm just going to make sure that it's the size of our can, like so. Uh, so now we can view it by pressing Alt Z and we can watch right through this uh, as we're modeling. I'm going to select the top part 7. I'm going to place another one right here just for 
demonstration purposes and I can observe what it actually looks like. We're going to model the part all the way over here. Then on this part, we're going to move around some vertices. And after we've got that, we've got this general shape. I'm going to bring it in and then make this, uh, this final part of the can. We press I, bring it inwards. And now it has to go down as well, all right? So we're going to disable our subdivision surface modifier. And now we're going to press G and C and bring this down. Scale it just a little bit. I, and somewhere around here, I'm just going to check S and make sure that we follow this kind of curvature right here. So now I'm going to add another loop cut right here by pressing Control R, pressing G, C, and bringing it down so that we get that can shape right over there. And if we look at this with our subdivision surface modifier, it is kind of working out the way we want it to. Not entirely there yet, but it's getting there. So right here, we can select our top part, I, to inset an S and bring it right over here. Here, another area starts. So this is actually a bit more down. I'm going to press I and GC, bring this down. And the same goes for this part, I once more. Then bring it upwards with GC and I once more and bring it downwards with GC. And now I'm going to press I once again and bring it down. Maybe it's a little bit too much to the top. So I'm just going to select this edge loop, control plus, plus, uh, control minus. Select this one by hand, GC, and bring it down just a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. Ah. That's starting to look like a can. We're going to select this. I am going to press I one more time. And make sure the bottom curvature aligns with this uh, edge already. So that's going to save us some work. Now, pressing on one, we can select these vertices and move them around in order to change the shape and get it exactly as we want it to. And this is just simply pressing G and moving the vertices around our shape. We're almost there. I'm just going to drag around some vertices and have some fun with this in the process. So right now we've got this entire part. Press I, bring it inwards. As you can see, there's a slight dent over there. So we're just going to replicate it once more. Press I. GC. We're just going to do that one more time. And this time I'm going to press E. Maybe it's a bit sharp around here. So we're going to select this loop cut, press S. And now this looks kind of soft. Uh, I'm not sure if it's deep enough, so we're just going to press uh, G and C. I'm going to turn off the subdivision surface modifier. I like to see what I'm doing. I, E. And uh, I think this makes sense. Alt set. I, skill, and get this curvature aligned. And now what we want to do is press X, delete it. Select this entire area by holding Alt and clicking on the edge. Then press on the grid fill option. And this one we're going to fill with the grid. Something like this, maybe even 10. Ah, look at this, nine. Nine would be fine. So now we've got some other vertices to move around once more. And this is the way we're just going to shape it like so, very easy. Just dragging around some vertices in order to follow along with the shape. Now we've got this entire area. I'm just going to select everything. We can smooth it out first. So let's see, we've got the smooth tool right here. Make it just a little bit smoother. Like so. And then some of these vertices are not in the correct position anymore, so we're just going to change that. All right, cool. Now let's select all of these, holding control and shift. It follows the shortest path. I, 
G and C. All right, that looks like uh, the structure that's in there. Very nice. I feel like this could be scaled a little bit more like so. And control plus and shift E in order to make it a bit sharper, but not too sharp. Let's add another loop cut right there. All right, so now we're going to model this part of the can. And excuse me, my camera kind of went out. I'm going to add a plane. And this plane I'm going to bring upwards, scale it. We can also just model it on this one right here and it will be a little bit more clear what we're doing. Uh, so I'm going to bring this to this side. S, X, S, Y. And now we've got a very thin part. Control R to make a loop cut. I'm going to delete this side, add a modifier, type mirror, and now we've got it all mirrored. And now I'm just going to follow along with the shape as intended, I'm using only the rotate and scale tool. So E, bring it upwards, maybe scale it a little bit like this, E, and going to bring it something like so. R. Make sure to follow along with the curvature or else you're not going to uh, get it right. E. Move it around like so. We can also press on Y or X to have it aligned with the right space. And now we can pretty much bring it entirely over here. I think what I want to do is I want to follow this part first and then from there on we can uh, follow the rest. E and bring it over here, scale it. E, bring it over here, scale it. Make sure that it follows the curvature correctly. R, like so. And E, and now it should be straight. So we're going to press Alt C, uh, I mean SX0 and bring it over here. Now on the mirror uh, modifier, we can select clipping. And as soon as we bring it in there, it doesn't go any further and now it is correct. So what have we got over here? We need some loop cuts. Uh, I'm going to add some loop cuts right here. And I'm going to place this like so. I'm going to place this like so. And now it follows along with the curvature a lot nicer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these parts, bring it inwards, scale it on the Y and something like this SX0 because I want it to be straight all the way over here. Now we can add an extra loop cut like so and scale it so that it follows along with the curvature a lot more nicely. I'm just going to select this, press E and bring it towards this side. And now that's pretty much uh, a lot of this can part done. All right, so what's actually happening here, we cannot see it because it's a very low resolution image, but there is a circular object going right around this because that's the way that this uh, can opener or whatever you call it is hold in place or else it would just be lying on top of the can. But there's a circle right here, which is attached to the can itself. And this is the clip. And now the circle goes through this tinier hole of the clip so that it remains stuck to the can itself. And we can go ahead and make that right now. So I'm going to select all of these edges and bring it in closer by scaling. So I'm going to press E once again and scale it. But as you saw, we must make sure not to go over like this because then we get a triangle right here. We're going to make it follow the shape by adjusting it by hand perfectly ourselves. So right now we have got this curvature shape going on right here, but we've also got this empty loop that we're going to have follow our new curvature right there. So let's bring it upwards, G, C, E, scale, rotate. You know the name of the game by now. 
And uh, it looks like this is wider, but mm, I'm not really trusting it. Do this by eye and make sure that it's the same scale all throughout. SX0, make sure it's straight and bring it in there. And now we've got our perfect little hole for our other circle to come through and hold this can thing in place. There are some uh, interesting shapes going on over here. You, as you can see, it is going upwards slightly and downwards. And there is these kind of baffles and what we now pretty much have an empty plane. I'm going to press control three and add our subdivision service modifier. As you can see, it already looks a lot better. Now we're going to apply our mirror. But before we do that, I'm going to make a backup of this. Press M to make a new collection and call it backup can. And now I'm going to turn this off, make sure that we do not see it. And I'm going to apply our mirror and it looks like a pretty nice shape, not bad at all. So I'm going over here right now, there is no geometry to this space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press E and bring it upwards. Now this might mess around with our normals and the way the entire uh, shape looks. I'm just going to add a loop cut and bring it upwards and a loop cut and bring it downwards. I think it's a bit too much. I'm just going to skate it on the set axis. Shade smooth, it should be even smaller, I believe, something like this. But now we have our shapes and geometry for this side. As you can see, this is going upwards a little bit. So we're just going to replicate that uh, by adding a loop cut over here, G, C. And I feel like that is a more natural shape for this thing to follow. Now, as you can see, there is a, a slight indentation right here. I'm just going to select all of these lines all the way over here. Yeah, this is about right. We actually need two more of those. I'm just going to do that. And now bring it down, shift E, and see what that looks like with the subdivision surface modifier on. All right, uh, a little bit softer. All right, we're getting there. This is uh, starting to look pretty good. I'm just going to drag it over here and bring it in the same shape as our reference. Bring it down and have it lie on our can like so. And we're just going to add another cylinder, scale it down, Scale it down. Now I'm going to make a loop cut, GG to move it upwards. GG. I'm going to select this entire part. And then I'm going to press Alt S, uh, no, Alt E, in order to extrude faces along the normals. And then now I'm going to scale up this entire thing just a little bit. Scale it down on the Z axis, make sure it is nice and smooth because of our subdivision surface modifier. This is the final shape of the top. And as you can see right here, the bottom side actually has a slight harder edge and we have not incorporated that into our model as of yet. So this is the final adjustment for this model. Press Ctrl R to make a loop cut. Going to bring it towards this side. I'm going to turn this off for a little second. And now I'm going to I'm going to make this line a lot sharper and stronger and maybe do it on the inside as well. So this is our final can. We've modeled the can, so now it's time to texture it using our own design. You'll learn some advanced texture tricks, such as combining different UV maps and the way alpha masks work. So click here to watch the next part. <laughs>